welcome to my studio. I'm Nancy Bennett. I am, I guess, officially a landscape artist, but I would call myself a skyscape artist. I paint um, the skies almost exclusively, and wherever I am, I can always look up and be inspired. I've been working on this painting, jokingly called Crabzilla, or the crab that ate Toronto. Um, I should come up with another name for it because it's going to get be hard to uh, finally give it a, a proper title at the end of it because I've been calling it Crabzilla for quite a few weeks now. Anyways, we I am now done with the sky. I uh, put in some some dark clouds at the base, and I think it really just sets off the the wild exuberant sky. And a fellow artist came by and had a look and said, if you could paint an orgasm, that's what I think it would look like. So maybe I'll start calling it the orgasm painting. That'll be its new title. Anyways, today we're going to move on to the foreground. I have mixed together the paint that I, I want to use in the foreground, which is, it's going to be dark because I, the focus is the sky. So I I mix together some gray, some brown, and then some orange to warm it up a little bit because it, it's a warm, sunny picture. Um, and this is the paint that I'm going to be working with. So we've got a gray here, which will be right up against the bright sky, and then the gray with the brown and orange. That's a, it's quite a bit uh, warmer, um, and I'll use them both. I do my mixing. I know I talk a lot about painting with a big knife, but I do my mixing with a small knife because I don't know why. I actually just do it out of habit. It just gives me a lot more control. It's more comfortable in my hand for mixing, whereas the large one is more comfortable for painting. Okay, so here is the orgasm painting, and I'm going to get going on that, on that foreground. I've got my big knife. It's got good feel to it. It's good weight. Putting some of this dark gray on the edges. I talked earlier when when using thick boards this is an inch and a quarter I think thick um, a lot of artists struggle with what to do with the edges do you leave them blank do you paint them all one color what color um, I prefer to paint not the uh, not a continuation of the actual painting but to put the same colors in a mishmash around the edges and it just uh, finishes off the painting makes it look more now that we've got the, the skyline laid out, the foreground a little bit. I'm going to put paint on my knife, but I'm not sure I'm going to do anything with it anything more with this. I'm really happy. I stepped away for a minute and came back and looked at it and I'm happy with with the skyline. I think I walked a fine line between detail and blank silhouette. There's a there's no question what city you're in when you look at this. And I think it may be finished. I won't know for sure. I'm going to spend some time with it, looking at it and absorbing it and making sure that everything feels just right every time I look at it. But while the paint's still wet, I'm going to show you what I'm doing with, with that little orange square in the bottom corner. So this tool, it's like a paintbrush, but it's it's rubbery. And you saw me cleaning up the CN tower with it. It's it's very handy for removing paint. It's kind of scoops off very cleanly. And I'm gonna use it for this next step. My signature. And with it removing the dark paint on top, the orange from the square below still shows. And, but it fits in with the painting because 
it's one of the colors that, that is pretty prominent in the sky. I'm going to sit with this painting and soak it in and I don't think I'll be doing much more with it. And thanks for joining me. Subscribe to my channel. You can catch up on all my updates as soon as I post them. See you next time. So, check back. Mm -hmm.